too much dirt in that hair? Get it trimmed. Hanging out with you Valentine, huh? Good for you. Nikki's good people. I, you know what I mean. Am I care cares about you? Oh, What's up? I'll see what I can do. A lot of my cases dead end in Boston Common. I'd prefer not to join them.
Heads up. Wait there. Look alive. Count on it. What? Who's there? Someone's there. Something out.
sweet.
Wouldn't want it going to waste now, would we? Must want to protect something awful precious. Well, it's the detective. Checking down another wayward husband to his mistress? Why? Someone stand you up? You trying that, uh, what do you call it? Evasive language on me? And who are you, huh? Valentine's new dick in training? We're hiring, but I don't think you'd measure up. Don't be like that. You just got the look of someone who's in the market for a little insurance. You better back off. Or you're the one who's gonna need insurance. Well, well, hey, all right. We'll just say your insurance is paid up for now, okay? Whoa, 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 time out. Nick Valentine makes a rare visit to town, and you're hassling his friend here with that extortion crap? Good to see you again, Nick. Hancock? What do you care? She ain't one of us. No love for your mayor, Finn. I said let her go. You soft, Hancock. You keep letting outsiders walk all over us. One day, be a new man. Come on, man. This is me we're talking about. Let me tell you something. Now, why'd you have to go and say that, huh? Breaking my heart over here. Now I know you had old Finn handled back there, but a mayor's got to make a point sometimes. You all right? I'm fine. Thanks for taking care of him. Good. Now, don't let this incident taint your view of our little community. Good neighbors of the people, for the people. You feel me? Everyone's welcome. Sounds like anarchy. The best kind of anarchy. Embrace it, and maybe one day you'll call this little slice of chaos home. So long as you remember who's in charge. Look alive. There's something you need? Something up? Your thoughts? A Commonwealth's not an easy place to travel alone. Nice to have someone watching my back. Nothing else for now. Sure, sure.
Everything here is guaranteed to injure, maim, or kill at your discretion. Except me. I only kill when I want to. Who? What are you? I'm a woman, baby. Can't you tell? Oh, of course you are. It's just all those metal plates. You're a robot, right? A very womanly robot. Designation Assaultron. Designed to provide a variety of security related tasks to the modern man. Runtime conclusion. Why work for the man when you can work for yourself? New designation. K-L-E-O. Cleo. Fully independent small business owner. Robot enough for you, smooth talker? Now what are you buying? You're an Assaultron? That's what my makers called me. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm a woman. And I run a store that sells very large guns. So what'll it be? So, what kind of weapons do you have? Anything that can kill a man, I sell. Except suicidal depression. That is unfortunately not packageable. Now, are we doing business? Let's see what you have. A gun for every occasion. The hood of steel better stay out of good neighbor. All I'm saying. Oh, new face walks into my store, and you're not even screaming yet. Very polite. You let me know if anything catches your fancy. Did you say something about people screaming at you? That's right. Some newcomers have never seen a ghoul before. Can't handle them. Friendly face, I say. So you need some supplies? What's it like, you know, being a ghoul? Well, it's a lot worse when people always ask you about it all the time. But I guess I can't blame them. On the upside, I look pretty good. For being over 220 years old. Now, were you buying anything? Wait. You're 220 years old. Okay, okay. It's more like 270 years. But don't go blabbing that to everyone. Being a ghoul means you live a long time. You stop counting birthdays. 
Do you know what it's like being that old? What's it like? It's like being in a time warp sometimes. Hundreds of years between you and the twenty-somethings running around here. Not that you'd know what that's like, would you? Actually, I do. <laughs> well, now you're just making fun of me. If you were as old as I was, you would have been around since before the war. So let's hear it. Come on. Tell me what the world was like before the war, if you're so ancient. I, uh... I had a beautiful house. White picket fence and a lawn with the, the greenest grass you've ever seen. It was peaceful. It was, wasn't it? Sorry. Last thing you want to see is an old lady tearing up. Well, you're either the most well-preserved ghoul I've ever seen, or you're the second best bullshitter and good neighbor. <laughs> So, what do you remember about the past? Oh, sweetie, I was an angry young woman back then. Thought the world was sick and wouldn't give me my due. Then it all ended, and well, I ended in a way, becoming a ghoul. Maybe when you get to be my age, everything starts to look like fate. Anyway, I like your story better, whether or not it's true. It's the truth. All of it. You know, if you haven't already, you should check out the Hotel Rexford. There's another pre-war ghoul hanging around there. Well, we should get back to business. What are you picking up? What kind of things do you sell? Oh, a bit of everything. Canned beans to cans. I try to take every weird bit of junk the caravans are willing to trade. So chances are you'll find something to your liking here. Ready to take a look? I'll take a look, sure. Everything's guaranteed to last. Until it doesn't. I've seen a lot of crazy stuff in my time, but a flying ship? <laughs> out in the lobby all day again or are you actually going to go down and do some work being available to the customers is work it's not all about cooking chems claire it's not all about sampling those chems either maybe if you stop using you can focus what where's the fun in cooking it if you ain't using it my mistake before you even start, let's skip to the point. We have rooms, one room specifically. Payment due up front. Can you tell me a bit about this hotel? Oh, why do they always have questions? The Hotel Rexford used to be a grand establishment. We even had guests that didn't throw up all over the floor. 
But now the only people who come by are looking for somewhere to nurse a hangover or shoot up Kim's. So, still want a room? Here's your money. The room is on the top floor. When you come to the hallway, it's the last one on the right. I just clean up around here. On. Hold position. I'll stay put. Hey. Do something for you? Moving in. You see a lot of folks at their worst in my line of work. Hard to not let it get to you sometimes. This place ain't what it used to be, and it ain't used to be much. Your room is upstairs, top floor. The last one on the right down the long hallway. Excuse me. What? No. It can't. It... it, it. It's you! From Sanctuary Hills, right? Wait, are you from vault -Tec? I am vault -Tec. Twenty years of loyal service, and now look at me! I wasn't on the list, but you... Look at you! Two hundred years, and you're still perfect! How? How's that possible? The vault had these pods that froze us in place. I only thought out recently. What? vault never told me that. Unbelievable. Well, I had to get to the future the hard way. Living through the filth, the decay, and the bloodshed. Look at me. I'm a ghoul. A freak. I'm so sorry. I didn't know this would happen. You know, you're the only other person I met from before. I, uh, I... Oh, God. I've been so alone here. No Commonwealth settlement. Once a ghoul with 200 years of vault tech sales experience. Where else could you go? Diamond City bigots don't allow ghouls inside. It's just here, or back at Sanctuary, talking to that crazy robot of yours. Hey, you know you could head back to Sanctuary. I'll come visit. I promise. Really? You... you will? Okay. I'll head over there right now. You... Promise you'll come visit, right? I'll see you there. Hey, let me ask you something. Is something wrong? Well, I, I sort of had the same question. It's just, uh, with everything that's happened with you and your, your family, it's a whole hell of a lot to process. I wanted to make sure you're holding up all right. Why do you ask? I just had a hard go with the, uh, transition myself. Took me a long damn time to get a feel for this place. Thank goodness I found Diamond City. It's got its flaws, sure, but it beats the hell out of anywhere else in the Commonwealth. Of course, when I took up there back when, people were just as scared of the Institute as they are now. Maybe more. 
The massacre of the CPG was still pretty fresh in people's minds at that point. And folks were still losing sleep over the broken mask. Plenty of people assumed I was just a saboteur, moving in to melt down the reactor or poison the drinking water. But at the time, they couldn't exactly turn me away. Massacre of the CPG? What's that? The Commonwealth Provisional Government. Years back, a group of settlements tried to get together and form a coalition. Every settlement with even a hint of clout sent representatives to try and hash out an agreement. Only the Institute sent a representative of their own. A synth. The man killed every rep at the talks. The Commonwealth Provisional Government was over before it even got off the ground. I took up in town not long after. I was damn lucky they didn't just tell me to scram right then and there. Broken mask? This was long before I'd moved to town, but apparently some gentleman type shows up in Diamond City, heads down to Power Noodles. Guess he didn't like the food because he pulled his pistol and opened fire on the folks enjoying theirs. When security finally put enough holes in him to drop him, they say he was full of servos and sprockets, just like yours truly. Seems he malfunctioned, went berserk. It was the first time people realized that synths had stopped looking like me and started looking like them. Considering what these folks went through, I felt real lucky they let me in the front gate at all. Why would you want to live among bigots like that? Nah, I couldn't really blame them, given the circumstances. But folks sure started turning the other cheek when I showed up with the mayor's daughter. Gal of about 15. Pride and joy of the mayor back then. Man by the name of Henry Roberts. The young Miss Roberts decided she'd run off with some caravan hand she'd uh, <clears throat> known for an evening. Turns out the guy was part of a gang of kidnappers. I didn't even know who I was rescuing, just stumbled on a crying girl and four toughs. I took her home and the mayor dubbed me a hero, offered me a place in town. Lots of folks protested and said I was a spy, but he wouldn't have it. Taking up in the city was tricky at first, but I never tried to hide what I was, and people seemed to warm to that. Was it hard, settling in? Yeah, they sure didn't make it easy. I started off doing the jobs no one else wanted. I got more banged up being Diamond City's handyman than I ever did living out in the ruins. But I guess folks never forgot I rescued the mayor's daughter, so they started coming to me when people went missing. Wife runs off with a new paramour and takes the rent money with her? Talk to the synth. An upset father decides moving him and the kids to good neighbor in the dead of night's not the worst damn idea since the bomb? Go get Nick. After a while, the jobs got so backed up, they didn't even ask me to do the handyman stuff anymore. Hell, I was so happy to do it, it was months before I started charging anyone. I never stopped being Nick the Synth, but it was Nick the Detective folks came to see. It was about then that things, uh, well, things finally started feeling normal. It took me a long time to realize that home is where you make it. And with some time and effort, this place can be home for you, too. That's a long story, but I hope it helps. Want to get moving? Hey. I'm all ears. Go ahead. Your thoughts? You good to keep going? I don't sleep or eat or anything like that. But if you need to, you do it. That's all. Got it. Stay there. Guess I'll settle in then.
Heads up. I'll see what I can do. On me. Can do. I'm listening. Going to have a conversation with Mr. Morowski about your conduct. Again. What? Ah, oh, come on, Claire. What'd I do this time? It's what you're not doing. You're supposed to stay in that lab of yours, making those chems. The air is nicer up here in the lobby. Besides, don't you like having my smiling company? No, I don't. You look a little tired there, Bob. You're right, Stan. Always being on the bottom of the heap. I'm even tired of your loyal fucking face standing here every day reminding me I used to have good men at my side. Didn't need to upset you, Stan. There's one person in this whole backstabbing neighborhood that's earned the right to upset me from time to time. It's you. Don't worry about it. 